Well, hey there. Welcome to day 1021 of What's You Up To Now. Sharon horn Elstrom here, documenting my journey as I transitioned from the brick and mortar world to the online world. Spent <clears throat> over a quarter century, yes, over 25 years in corporate America, working for some of the coolest corporations and companies in the world, literally. Some of the biggest companies in the world, some of the coolest giant family-owned companies, and all different different industries and things. Primarily manufacturing. I I have always loved manufacturing and seeing how things were built. My mom used to get mad because when I was a little kid, I would take apart anything I could take apart in the house, and then I would just leave it in pieces. I never put it back together, but I like to take things apart and see how they worked and what was inside. Uh, and then actually 47 years. I started my first business when I was 13, which is really scary to think, and I turned 60 right as COVID was hitting this year. So that is 47 years in different businesses, different types of business situations, primarily as an owner in some way, shape or form on the side while working in corporate America. And in 2017, I had gotten divorced and had to, you know, divide all the assets like you do in a divorce and found myself in a situation where I didn't really want to continue doing the things that I'd been doing previously with my ex-husband. And I wanted to explore and look into different things. And so that's why after about a decade of really being interested and curious about the internet, I thought, I'm going to jump online and I'm going to see if I can create and recreate my offline success in the online world. Now, not there yet. Have not in any way, shape or form been able to duplicate the success I had offline online for, and I could make a lot of reasons. I could make a lot of excuses, but that's part of why I'm documenting my journey and sharing the things that work, the things that don't work, the good, the bad, the ugly, the lies that are told on the internet, just like everywhere else about get rich quick things and about shortcuts and hacks and not having to work and you know just do this and it's easy money just buy my system and you're going to be a gazillionaire uh, i want to to blow the lid off some of that nonsense and some of that uh, lack of reality that so many people are fed not only in the online world but in the offline world as well there are ways to build a business there's a simple process really simple process if you follow the steps it's it's easy the steps are easy. The steps are simple, but it's hard work. It takes effort. It takes work. It takes you actually doing it to make it happen. So today we're talking about, I create content every day. One of the things I am visually challenged. So one of the things I realized that I was going to have to do was figure out how to make live video and do live video. So every day I produce live video content for my audience and my audiences because I actually am serving a few different groups. Um, one is a, a business owner group called Super Size Your Business. And for that today, our idiom was, I talk about an idiom every day. As part of my move about a year ago, I started sharing idioms and what they mean. Everybody you know, likes to share a word of the day. Oh, this is the word of the day or the word of the week. I have a really successful business friend who, um, shares the same content over and over and over again. She's got, you know, a handful of books and a handful of, of words that she uses and she uses those to promote and sell her business and her business coaching. Uh, but, and I'm like, that's awesome. That's cool. But it's all about marketing and all about you. I want to share information that I think about and helps me grow, but also helps other people. So I started sharing just as a filler, an idiom a day. And it, I, I wanted, wanted to quit a couple of times. I won't lie. I, sometimes I get sick of it and I'm like, oh, I can't figure out how to make this idiom apply to building your business. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm sick of it. I've done hundreds of them. Um, is this really worth my time and energy? And whenever I feel resistance like that to something that I've been doing, I realize that it means I need to challenge myself more and understand why I'm doing it in the first place. And why I'm doing it in the first place is to help me and other people grow and expand, open our minds and see things from a different perspective. And a lot of these idioms, you're like, how on earth does that have anything to do with business? Today was head over heels in love. What does that have to do with building and growing your business? Well, as I looked into the idiom and the meaning, and I actually Googled and researched what are the different stages or phases of love, I realized they are the exact same stages and phases of growing a business, right? It's all a process. And they're, they're very much aligned in terms of the stages of starting and building and growing a business and the stages of love and a committed long-term relationship. And they both end up with wanting to change the world, right? Making the world a better place. So I think that even the ones that I think, oh my God, how is this going to fit? 
there's always a connection. There's always a way to fit. And it's really a mental gymnastic thing for me to find out and figure out for myself, how can I use this to grow my business? How can I use this understanding to make my business and me a better person? So that was our idiom today. Our fun challenge today, we're doing a 365 day fun challenge <clears throat> as pajama grandma. When I first came online, I was scared to do video. Let's, let's be honest. I was scared to death to turn on my video and do a live video. And so I, I adopted, based on what I'd modeled and seen other people do, a persona. One of my, um, the people that I follow the longest and I look up to and admire and love and adore is Jim Edward. And he always, in the beginning, showed up in a Hawaiian shirt. Now, over the decade or two decades he's been online, it was the Hawaiian shirt thing. That was his thing. He always presented and talked and was seen and branded in a Hawaiian shirt. Now, uh, <clears throat> over, I don't even know the last probably six years, maybe he switched to this unicorn persona. And <clears throat> he's he, when you can, I can't think of a unicorn or see a unicorn without thinking of Jim Edwards, terrific branding. So from him and a couple other people, I learned that you want to brand yourself. So I, came out and I was pajama grandma. Now, secretly, I was hanging out in my pajamas and my robes a lot longer working online than I ever would have gotten away with working in the, you know, going out in the real world and interacting in the real world. And so pajama grandma, and I was a grandma, new grandma, it, it fit for me, it was comfortable and I, I kept it on, but I was wanting to stop doing it. I didn't want to show up in my pajamas all the time anymore. And so as COVID hit, I had already decided at the beginning of 2020 that I was going to let my pajama grandma part of my persona go. And I was actually going to get dressed and show up as who I really am. Now, pajama grandma is totally and absolutely positively who I really am. It's just not who I am all the time. It's just like in corporate America. <clears throat> part of me was always in corporate America, but it wasn't all of me, right? <clears throat> we never, in different situations, we behave in ways that are appropriate to the situation, which is frankly, people, as it should be. If you're in a professional setting, in a professional organization, and in a, a professional environment, you should behave professionally, right? Yeah, you might have some bad habits, but you don't need to, like saying, yeah, you don't need to bring them into that environment. We should always behave, you know, in a way that's appropriate to the situation. Not because other people expect us to, but because it's it's the right thing to do, right? We should always do what's the right thing to do. The right thing for us, but also the right thing with respect to interacting with other human beings. So <clears throat> corporate America was my professional corporate cleaned up three-piece suit, two-piece suit, suit persona, and super professional, super organized, super polished, right? And then pajama grandma is kind of the opposite of that, which was the point. The point was to say that we can be successful by being our authentic self, by being who we are, we can be successful. And the laptop lifestyle allows you to hang out in your pajamas, show up in your pajamas. Guess what? This uh, working from home stuff <coughs> and all of the, uh, the, the, if COVID has done anything, it has made the jump from the offline to the online world absolutely positively, not only necessary, but easier than ever. It has made it the way to operate. Yep. You want to have and may have your physical location for your business, but you sure as heck want to have an online component as well. And I've been saying that for a couple of years and, you know, it was a harder sell. Now it's almost inevitable. People realize I better have some kind of a remote or online or automated way for people to reach me and do business with me besides them physically coming in or I'm not going to be in business anymore. Uh, my daughter was working for... Burton Corporation before and, and Burton before COVID and then she was laid off. She was in the retail end and they had been talking for the longest time about, you know, phone orders and people being able to just call in and pick up at the store at the curbside and they hadn't done it, hadn't done it because why? We all have priorities and we all get busy and COVID made that absolutely essential that that be part of their standard operating procedures, the way they do business. And that's uh, one of my favorite things about COVID, if there's good things about COVID is that it has made remote work, remote things, uh, doing things differently, the the way to survive. I always drove me nuts when I was in corporate America. I had to travel a lot for a couple of my jobs. One in particular, I traveled all the time. And I had, I had a young family, so it was really challenging and difficult for me to be traveling all the time. One year I missed every holiday, every family event in my 
in my family, all our birthdays, my anniversary, everything, because I was traveling for that job. And that's part of my exodus from corporate America was saying, it's not worth it to miss all these things. So uh, I lost my train of thought thinking about the old days at corporate America. <clears throat> so what else am I working on? Uh, book, working on that is the day after I said it would be done. The outline and the rough draft is done. I'm just filling in content and stories and finding clips and pieces of and and things to supplement and augment that now before I send it off to a an editor. I definitely need an editor to go through and, and clean it up for me and make it make it good. Uh, working on actually putting together a summit for early next year, probably January or February. Have not decided yet. I suppose it's. November, I better get on deciding that so I can contact people and see who wants to be a part of the summit. Uh, I have done a summit before for women business owners, which was really fun. And I've been wanting to do another one, but COVID, COVID, I should have done it, but I was busy doing the get up and go challenge. So, and I like doing the get up and go challenge, but I think early next year, I want to do another summit. And I've already got a couple of people that have committed to wanting to do it with me. So I'm going to do a summit, uh, book summit, Get up and go. Oh, no nonsense November. Did I talk about no nonsense? No nonsense November is a. I'm sharing a tool a day based on a friend's recommendation. Hey, share a life tool a day through the month of November. Something that's helped you and made a huge impact and difference in your life. And so today was about forgiveness and uh, the power of forgiveness and how important it is for you to forgive not only other people but to forgive yourself. And mentioned that the next Get Up and Go Challenge will be December 1st through 31st. Uh, we're going to do the final this year free get up and go challenge. Will get up and go move forward next year? I don't know. Haven't decided yet. I'll probably decide December 30th, December 31st, what's going to happen with get up and go challenge. Maybe before then. <laughs> Sometimes in the 30 day challenges, I decide what I'm going to do moving forward about the middle of the month, but uh, not, not always. Sometimes it's at the last minute painful confession not even a painful confession it's just my process it's the way I do things we all do things differently so get up and go challenge forgiveness to not get up and go no nonsense November get up and go challenge get up and go no nonsense November was forgiveness get up and go challenge the December 1st to 31st a get up and go challenge page free for everybody on in the get up and go challenge private group are all of the past challenges all of the videos all of the content for this entire year is on that page. You have to share your email so that you're not gonna spam, but otherwise they're all there in different units, divided up and in order if you wanna go watch any of the past challenges or get any of that information. You can actually, if you know how to on Facebook, you can search by topic or category and you can find all of the, the times that we talked about or a particular topic. So for example, <clears throat> I don't recall if I've talked about forgiveness in any of the Get Up and Go challenges, probably in some way shape or form so you could go into the units page and or the group page and you could search for the term forgiveness and you could find any time that we've talked about forgiveness or you could pick any other tool or any other topic and say put that in type that in and it will pull up all the videos all the content that has to do with that that is the power of Facebook groups I don't know if people uh, understand or use them that way but I first started using groups and the, the social learning units when they first came out, have loved them ever since because it allows me to organize my content in a way that makes sense to people on a free platform, right people? It's free to use Facebook. So anybody that a coach or a creator or a business owner or a leader can use and create their own group and it can be a private group, but I'd say if you want to be a private group, make it private because down the road they said you're not going to be able to change um, the private to public, public to private. So if you at all think that you might want to make it a private group, make it a private group right now before they take that option away. All right, that's it. That's all I've got today. I'm sure I could talk about some more stuff, but I have got fun stuff to do today. I hope you do too. Have an amazing fun day. If I can help you in any way, if you have any questions about offline business, offline world, online world, manufacturing, quality, sanitation, processes, systems, uh, personal development, etc. Hit me up in the comments below. I might not know the answer, but I guarantee I know a resource or someone to get you to the next thing you need right now. All right. Have a great day. Catch you tomorrow.